the reason why most spiritual and religious traditions recommend that we direct our attention either inwards towards our innermost being of pure awareness or outwards towards the ultimate reality of God's infinite being. is because the default position of most of our minds is to attend to objective experience, to be busy with objects, thoughts, feelings, sensations, perceptions. It is in response to this that the spiritual traditions say direct your attention either inwards towards awareness or beyond outwards beyond objective experience towards God's infinite being the first approach is the path of discrimination jnana yoga the second approach, the path of bhakti, or the path of devotion. In both cases, the mind is being encouraged to relinquish its the focus of its attention from objective experience. In other words, objective experience is the place where we start. It is for the same reason that philosophy has been, and philosophers have been engaged for centuries in the question, how does something come from nothing? How does some thing come from no thing? In other words, the debate or the inquiry starts with the presumption of things. How does some things come from that which is not a thing? Again, the investigation begins with the presumption of things, with objective experience. Scientists are engaged in exactly the same inquiry. One of the main unanswered questions in science today is the hard problem of consciousness. How does consciousness arise from matter? Again, the presumption is matter, things, objective experience. So the religious and spiritual traditions, the philosophers, the scientists, they all start with the same presumption. 
they will begin the investigation or the inquiry with the presumption of the reality, the independently existing reality of objective experience, things, matter. And each of these disciplines, the spiritual discipline, the religious, the, uh, the spiritual discipline, the discipline of philosophy and of science all begin with the presumption of things, matter, objective experience. And in each case they try to work backwards from objective experience, things or matter to the reality. In the case of the religious and spiritual traditions, this beginning with objective experience is a legitimate and compassionate concession to our minds, which are almost entirely engaged with objective experience. So these traditions say to the mind, just gently walk yourself back from your objective experience, that is your thoughts, feelings, sensations and perceptions, to that which is aware of them. In the case of the philosophical and scientific traditions, this is not a compassionate concession. They truly believe in the independent reality of things or matter. And it is for this reason that in neither of those two disciplines has the question ever been answered. How does something come from nothing? Or how is consciousness derived from matter? Those questions will never be answered. until the presumption of things or matter itself is seen to be false. So instead of starting with what we don't experience, that is the independently existing objects or things, why don't we start with what we do experience? Why don't we not start with a presumption, but start with experience? What is the primary element of experience? Awareness. instead of arriving at awareness through a process that starts with objective experience. Why not simply start as awareness? It's the obvious place to start because it is the primary element of all experience. Be awareness knowingly.
Awareness is the only thing we cannot approach or practice or direct our attention towards or meditate upon or investigate into. Anything we would approach or investigate or direct our intention, our attention towards or investigate into would be some kind of object. These kind of investigations and meditations and approaches are legitimate and compassionate concessions to the object-obsessed mind. But a time comes when we don't have to work our way back gradually, step by step, from objects to awareness. A time comes when we realize that we always start as awareness. We always are awareness. We never left awareness. Being awareness knowingly is the only thing we cannot practice. We cannot approach. approach. We cannot investigate into. We cannot talk about. See that you have never been anything other than awareness. The only reason we feel we have to return to awareness is because we feel that we left awareness. The one who feels that he or she has left awareness is like the character in the movie who feels that he or she has left the screen. As a compassionate concession to that one, the spiritual traditions give that one all kind of all kinds of exercises and meditations to do knowing full well in the meantime that but that that one is not even a separate independently existing self let alone a self that ever left its home of awareness Start as awareness. Why? Simply because it is our primary experience. And then ask yourself the question, have I ever ceased being awareness? Have I ever become anything other than awareness? Have I ever gone anywhere else apart from awareness?
awareness doesn't have to practice being awareness any more than the sun has to practice illuminating itself. Only a separate self would have to practice being awareness. But that separate self never really comes into existence. Existence, ex sistere, to stand out from. No separate self ever stands out from awareness and becomes an entity in its own right that then has to trace its way back to its source as awareness. All that is an illusion of thinking and feeling. And all the meditation techniques that are prescribed by the spiritual and religious traditions are compassionate concessions to that illusory self. The mind does not know reality. The senses do not perceive reality. The mind and the senses filter reality. The mind and the senses, that is thought and perception, filter the absolute reality of pure awareness and make it appear as a multiplicity and diversity of objective experience. That is thought and perception filter the ultimate reality and make it appear to itself as the body and the world. The body as we see it from the outside is the image of that filtering process. It is an image of the activity of consciousness through which consciousness takes the form of thought and perception and, and appears to itself as the world. But no other substance other than awareness itself ever comes into existence, ever stands out from itself and assumes a separate and independently existing identity. We never leave awareness, that is, awareness never leaves itself. It never becomes a separate self. It never ventures away from itself out into a world made of space and time and matter.
ask yourself the question, have I ever known or could I ever know anything other than the knowing of experience, the awareness of experience? Try now to find something other than the knowing of experience. It's not even the knowing of experience. We never find the of experience. We never find something separate from knowing. When I say we never find, who is the we that never finds anything separate from knowing? It is knowing itself. It is awareness itself that never finds anything other than the awareness of experience. But in fact, awareness doesn't know the awareness of experience. From awareness's point of view, it is not one thing and experience another. It is not a separate subject of experience, knowing a separate object, other or world. Experience is awareness. Experience is the activity of awareness, the vibration of awareness. So when I say we never know anything other than the knowing of experience, the we is knowing itself and the experience is knowing itself. So what I mean is that knowing never knows anything other than knowing. Awareness is and knows itself alone. Start with awareness. You, I, we, are awareness, and awareness is without parts, without any inside, without any outside. It is indivisible, indestructible, self-knowing. It is not possible to meditate upon awareness. Who would meditate upon awareness? Who would know awareness? Who would be aware of awareness? Only awareness itself. Awareness doesn't need to do anything to know itself, just like the sun doesn't need to do anything to illuminate itself. There is no need for practice, for meditation, for effort, no room for a path. There is no distance between awareness and itself, no time for a practice, no room for any effort to occur. See that and be free. Know that you have never been anything other than awareness. You have never known anything other than awareness. You have never loved anything other than awareness. You have never been anywhere. You have never done anything. common name for this simple recognition is peace or happiness. Not happiness a state of the mind or a pleasant sensation in the body. Happiness that is fulfillment, the absence of lack, the sense of completion. No experience can diminish me. No experience can aggrandize me. I am whole. I am indivisible. 
all experience is made out of myself. I need nothing but am everything. our conversations and contemplations and meditations are not meant to present reality as it is. They are meant to loosen up the old habitual ways of thinking and in particular the old ways of feeling. The old ways of thinking and feeling that I I'm a solid, dense, located entity made out of something called matter. Inside which the mind appears. Inside which a fleeting, fragile flame of awareness intermittently flickers. All our conversations, contemplations and meditations are really excavations of those old patterns of believing and feeling. They are not meant to replace those old patterns with new models. The new models are the new models that we build are simply thorns that are used to remove thorns. Awareness cannot be modelled. in an absurd, convoluted and irrational process of pseudo-reasoning. Contemporary science and contemporary culture in general has denied the reality of consciousness or awareness and have imagined a substance that it has never experienced called matter which it then believes to be the ultimate reality of all experience and whether we are aware of it or not almost all our thoughts and feelings are predicated on this belief in the ultimate reality of matter and our subsequent activities and relationships express these beliefs and feelings. In our culture, the only thing that is absolutely certain about experience. Awareness itself is denied or at best relegated. 
and the one thing of which we have absolutely no evidence at all. Matter is asserted as the ultimate reality. And we wonder why we are unhappy, why people live in loneliness and despair, why our relationships are full of conflict, why, in spite of all our technical ability, we still haven't found peace amongst nations. Someone before this morning's meeting, Linda, gave me this beautiful quote of Barack Obama's from the eulogy he gave a couple of days ago for Clementa Pinckney. Referring to him, he said he understood that justice grows out of the recognition of ourselves in each other. My liberty depends on you being free too. He understood that justice grows out of the recognition of ourselves in each other. He understood that true justice grows out of the recognition of our shared being. That there are not a multiplicity and diversity of awarenesses. All our minds are emanations from the same single source, the same shared being of awareness. The recognition of that is the foundation of peace in ourselves, peace in our intimate relationships, peace in our friendships, peace in our families and communities, and peace and justice amongst nations. Start with awareness. Start in awareness. Start as awareness. Be only awareness. Know only awareness. Love only awareness. Even to call it awareness is really blasphemous because in the absence of anything else to contrast awareness with, the word awareness itself has no meaning. be, know and love only this unnameable reality of all experience. <laughs>